Now, hello there, Geeks and Gamers. My name is Jesse Milestone, once again bringing you good hair and other important things. Today, I want to talk to you about the movie Green Book. Now, this movie is probably out of the theaters now because it made its run starting around Thanksgiving. Uh, maybe we'll be on streaming services and DVD if we still use those sometime soon. Uh, and it's not really a part of the geek culture. So you may be wondering, why? Why am I bringing up this movie? Well, in light of all of the things that we are talking about in relation to pop culture and geek culture and things like that, censorship, SJWs, etc., this movie is a really, really refreshing change of pace um, in the sense that it, it has all of the... the it is the recipe for a get woke go broke film and follows it's a true story set in the 60s about a black pianist who goes on his first tour of the south and brings along with him a somewhat prejudiced uh new york italian as his driver slash bodyguard so right there you're probably like oh no that sounds like dangerous territory but you would be wrong and that that is why we're talking about this movie because it is proof that this type of storytelling still exists, right? It is a blowback against all of the get woke, go broke nonsense, all of the films that just want to inject social and political commentary where it does not belong. Um, this film, obviously social commentary belongs in this film. It needs to be in this film, but it doesn't dominate this film. This movie is not about that. Uh, it, it has those messages, but this movie is about the relationship between these two men as they both go on this adventure and discover things. If not for all of the gravitas and serious moments, it's almost a buddy comedy. I mean, it's really, it's hysterically funny. It's very touching. It's very human. It's hard not to like this film um, because it's well made. It's clever. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And you're not being constantly bombarded with social messaging. You're being shown how it was like. This is just the way it was, it's not over the top, but it also doesn't shy away from things, which I think is equally as important, right? Um, and something that makes me giggle about this is you have to wonder, right? SJWs, their whole thing is censorship. You can't say that. You can't do that. That's offensive. So you wonder how they're actually going to handle it, watching a movie like this that doesn't shy away from those things. It's like, we're doing those things. We're saying those things. Look, we wrote that word right into the script because it belongs here because this is how it actually was. So it uses the shield of historical accuracy to be able to just present things in all of its blunt brutality. No dancing around language, no, no uh, skirting around issues, just having them right there as it was, as it sometimes still is in places. Just bam, there it is, there you go. Racism, it was real, it happened. What do you wanna do about it? Um, so I think that's, that's really refreshing to just have a movie that just addresses it, it comes right out and says it, it's not gonna, it doesn't try to make any judgments about people. Um, that's a wonderful thing about the film is you're starting with this, your main character is a white man um, with prejudice and the movie doesn't issue judgment on him. It doesn't denigrate him and tear him down and, 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 and create him as this villain or this monster for being this way. It acknowledges him for his humanity, for his flaws, it accepts him as, as is and allows him to grow and learn and change and be forgiven if need be. Um, and that is, you just don't have that anymore. Our world has become so black and white, no pun intended. It's become so divisive. It's us or them. It's this or that. You're here or you're other. There is no middle ground. There is no gray area. There is no black and white. There is no chance to grow and progress and change or be forgiven. And this movie gives that opportunity, right? This movie also deals with, again, the harsh realities of how things actually were, of what real racism looks like. Because I feel like we're forgetting this sometimes. We don't even know anymore because we have SJWs in our faces being like, ah, that was a microaggression which just demonstrates your passive racism and your institutionalized bigotry. And just other words like that that don't mean anything. And so it's nice to sit back and be like, there. That's what it is. This is a thing I can have a conversation about. These are issues I can understand and address, and then we can all agree, like, yeah, that's wrong. That's a thing. We all understand what that is. We can all see that thing. We can all agree that that is a thing that is wrong. Let's start from that common ground and move from there, rather than making up all these ridiculous button words and trying to make some dumbass movies about, like, the oppression of Starbucks uh, saying the wrong word to the wrong customer on the wrong day, and now clearly they're just totally homophobic or some other nonsense. Rather than looking at these tiny, insignificant issues, looking at what the actual problems look like 
and, and starting to understand the actual solutions, because that's another huge issue today. As I said, there's no chance at redemption. So looking at a story where we can take a character who is flawed, who is not perfect, um, who has prejudice, and we can say, this man can learn. He can be talked to, he can be reasoned with, you can be his friend, you can be his ally, and you can learn. And to take a character also, not just your hero minority, your Mary Sue minority who's just amazing at everything, but someone who's also disturbed and troubled and flawed. And it brings up these really interesting uh, conversations that, that I think are, the, that's, that's, what, that's what, where we learn and where we educate ourselves, right? Rather than being like, well, you are the other, you are the minority, so you are the gods and the rest of you are evil uh, white men. Um, you're actually looking at somebody and understanding a little bit of what that struggle is like because that's how we grow. That's how we improve is we look at a life that's different from ours and we understand it. And another really fascinating thing about this movie, because it doesn't do your stereotypical, you know, oh, the, you know, the poor little uh, minority character and the white savior, or whatever, whatever nonsense there is. The, your, your white character is the one who's in poverty and, and, your, and your black character is the one who's swimming in wealth. So you see that dynamic at play as well, not in your traditional way. You're seeing a world where like, there is a certain amount of privilege and they address that so well too, is that there is privilege here, right? Sure, you go down south and this guy can eat in a restaurant and that guy can't. But you talk about money. This guy can afford these things. This guy can have these things. This guy has been entitled to these things that this guy haven't. And they address those. They have those conversations. They just hash it out right there in a way where it's like, man, it's relatable. It's We all understand what they're talking about. And that is, I, it, it's so underrated to be able to have something like that. To be able to have a movie basically exemplifying the types of conversations we need to be having as opposed to the types of conversations we are having, which is, you're a racist. La 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 this nonsense where we never get anywhere we never learn and grow so on that note i really encourage all of you to watch green book i think that it is a, a fascinating movie it's a lot of fun look if you hate social commentary in your films don't care about the social commentary it's still a great movie your main characters are Viggo morrison or mahershala ali if you haven't seen them and stuff where have you been they're both great you really can't go wrong with it um but i think it also is a great example of of how the conversation could look when we want to talk about social change or or what issues like racism that still need to be exist in places in this country so that's my that was my personal take on it if you've seen it i'd love to know what you think um did you think it strayed too far into the you know sjw super woke territory uh or did you or were you on my side personally i've always been a person who's been very sensitive to uh the over messaging to the banging you on the head with the message whatever that message is and i didn't feel that in this film so i'd love to know what your take on that is um let's have a discussion because we're all adult human beings who can do that we don't just cry when people disagree with us because we're not sjw's so hooray for that if you want to see more of me you can check me out on mindless entertainment or i'll be back on geeks and gamers next week